Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sharia Qaid. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issues six decrees for this year. Decree 60 appointing out the office of the first Deputy Prime Minister, Hamad Faisal Mohammed Al Malki as General Coordinator for Projects and Strategic Planning with the rank of Assistant Undersecretary. Sheikh Fahad bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa as General Coordinator for Studies and Researches with the rank of Assistant Undersecretary. And Yara Rada Abdullah Faraj as General Coordinator for Media and Communication with the rank of Assistant Undersecretary. The first Deputy Premier is to implement the decree which will take effect from the date of his issuance and it is to be issued or rather published in the official gazette. Decree 61 of 2017 appoints the following as extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassadors. The ambassador at the Foreign Affairs Ministry's General Court, Dr. Jum'a bin Ahmed al kaabi as head of the Bahraini diplomatic mission in Oman with the title of extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador. The ambassador at the Foreign Affairs Ministry's General Court, Abdullah Abdullatif Abdullah, as head of the Bahraini diplomatic mission in Germany with the title of an extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador. The ambassador at the Foreign Affairs Ministry's General Court, Abdurrahman Mohammed Al Gaoud, as head of the Bahraini diplomatic mission in India with the title of an extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador. The ambassador at the Foreign Affairs Ministry's General Court, Ahmed Yusuf Ahmed Al Rawai, as head of the Bahraini diplomatic mission in Jordan with the title of extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador. The ambassador at the Foreign Affairs Ministry's General Court, Mohammed Ghassan Sheikho, as head of the Bahraini diplomatic mission in Indonesia with the title of extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador. The ambassador at the Foreign Affairs Ministry's General Court, Ahmed Mahmoud al Dosri, as head of the Bahraini diplomatic mission in Japan with the title of an extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador. The ambassador at the Foreign Affairs Ministry's General Court, Ibrahim Mahmoud Ahmed, as head of the Bahraini diplomatic mission in Tunisia with the title of an extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador. And Fuad Sadiq al Baharna is to be appointed as the head of the diplomatic mission in Algeria with the title of extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador. Decree 62 appoints Saeed Mohammed Al Fahimi, rather Fahani rather, as ambassador at the Foreign Affairs Ministry's General Court. Decree 63 appoints Sheikha Dr. Rana bint Isa bin Daij Al Khalifa as Under Secretary of the Foreign Affairs Ministry. The second article of the decree appoints the following as Assistant Under Secretaries Tawfiq Ahmed Khalil Al Mansour as Assistant Under Secretary for Western and Afro Asian Affairs, and Yusuf Mohammed Abdullah Jamil as Assistant Under Secretary for GCC and Arab Countries Affairs. The Minister of Foreign Affairs is to implement the decree which will take effect from the date of its issuance and it is to be published in the official gazette. Decree 64 appoints Dr. Sheikh Amnira bin Khalifa bin Hamad Al Khalifa as Executive Director of the Diplomatic Institute of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Decree 65 transfers the Assistant Undersecretary for Human Resources, Finance and Information Systems at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Khalil Yagoub Al Khayyat to become Assistant Undersecretary for Consular Affairs, Resources and Information at the same ministry. The Foreign Affairs Minister is to implement the previously mentioned decrees which will take effect from the date of its issuance and it is to be published in the official gazette. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa today issued Edict 35 of 2017 appointing directors at the Foreign Affairs Ministry. Under the edict, Riyadh Hassan Ahmed Al Gouroud was appointed as Citizens and Residence Affairs and Consular Services Director, Muna Abbas as Afro Asian Affairs Director, and Mohammed Abdurrahman Al Haidan as Legal Affairs Director. The edict also stipulates that Dr. Arwa Hassan Al Sayyid Ali was appointed as Communications Director, Sheikh Aisha bint Ahmed bin Sagar Al Khalifa as European Affairs and European Union Director, Sheikh Abdullah bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa as American Affairs and Pacific Affairs Director, and Khalid Yusuf Ahmed Al Jalahma as Operations and Follow-up Director. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Order 34 of 2017 appointing the following as Directors at the Office of the First Deputy Prime Minister. Imnira Ahmed Fakhri as Director of the Office of the First Deputy Prime Minister, Hamad Yagoub Al-Mahmid as Research Director, 
Sara Ahmed Burhidji, as Director of Communication Department, and Ziad Adil Darwish, as Director of the Studies Department. The Director General of the Office of the First Deputy Prime Minister is to implement the order which will take effect from the date of its issuance, and it is to be published in the Official Gazette. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Honorary President of the Bahrain Sports Federation for Disabilities, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited the headquarters of the Prince Sultan Center for Speech and Hearing. Upon arrival, His Highness was received by the advisor of His Majesty the King for Economic Affairs and President of the Board of Directors of the Bahrain Society for Child Development, Dr. Hassan bin Abdullah Fakhru, and a number of senior officials from the ministry and center. His Highness expressed pleasure and satisfaction in the visit for the keenness of the center's members to rehabilitate children and prepare them for integration into society. For his part, the advisor of His Majesty the King for Economic Affairs expressed pride in His Highness's visit, which stems from his keenness on supporting people with disabilities, which corresponds to the vision and directives of His Majesty the King. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamedan, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for his keenness on supporting people with disabilities, affirming the role of the Ministry of Labor and Social Development in providing all the means of supporting them in the context of the community partnership. The President of the Center, Dr. Fuad Shihab, asserted that His Highness's visit created a motivation to exert more effort in implementing programs and services that support people with disabilities through His Highness's humanitarian initiatives. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa crowned the first place winners of the 9th Bahrain International Junior Tennis Championship at the closing ceremony held by Bahrain Tennis Club today under his patronage. His Majesty the King's Advisor for Sports Affairs Saleh bin Isa bin Hindi Al Mana'i, Youth and Sports Minister Hisham Mohammed Al Jodar, officials, ambassadors, and sports enthusiasts also attended the ceremony. Sheikh Mohammed welcomed the participants in the championship in which more than 100 players representing 38 countries from all over the world took part. He welcomed them to the sporting event and the gathering of the new tennis players, which contribute to the development of their technical levels in the sports. He expressed appreciation to the players for their outstanding performances, noting the efforts of the Bahrain Tennis Club's chairman and board members. The Deputy Prime Minister honored the winners in the Girls' Championship and the Singles' Championship. The chairman of Bahrain Tennis Club, Hamis Mohammed Al Mughla, presented the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs with commemorative gifts. The club's chairman delivered a speech in which he affirmed the club's pride in organizing the championship for the ninth consecutive year, hailing the leadership's interest in the youth and athletes sector and in hosting events in the kingdom and the keenness of the Deputy Prime Minister and patronizing the championship. The club's chairman commended journalism and media on the outstanding coverage of the event on television, newspapers, and social media websites.
The Shura Council held its fourth session of the fourth legislative term headed by its chairman, Ali bin Saleh al-Saleh, in which it approved the recommendations of the Public Facilities and Environment Committee to approve the Council of Representatives' proposal on a draft law regarding the registration and safety rules for small vessels, according to the amendments the Council added. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated, along with the BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diyab bin Sagran Naimi, in the meeting of the Ministers of Foreign Affairs and Chiefs of General Staff of Member States of the Coalition for Supporting Legitimacy in Yemen, which was held in Riyadh today. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirmed the importance of the meeting and reviewing the achievements of the coalition. It also reflects the leading role of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud and the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia in reinforcing joint Arab action and supporting legitimacy. He also affirmed Bahrain's firm stance with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to preserve security and stability. The minister stressed that Bahrain does not target a specific party in Yemen, but stands against all external interferences, especially that of Iran. He added that Bahrain's defense force, along with Saudi and Emirati forces, will confront all attempts to undermine Yemen's stability adding that the Kingdom of Bahrain will continue on this path until legitimacy is restored in all parts of Yemen. The Foreign Minister said in order to stop terrorism funding in the region, the Kingdom of Bahrain, along with other brotherly countries in the United States, have classified a number of individuals and entities on the list of leaders, funders and aiders of Daesh and Al-Qaeda in Yemen. He also hailed the efforts of the King, Sa of the King Salman Center for Relief and Humanitarian Aid. The closing statement of the meeting affirmed that the member states of the Arab coalition have taken political and military moves to answer the Yemeni government's call according to the Security Council Resolution 2216. The meeting also denounced that the heinous acts of the militias against Yemeni people and the threat they impose on the security and stability of the region, mainly the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and the Kingdom of Bahrain, most notable of which was target, rather targeting al Kaaba, the Muslims' Mecca. Participants of the meeting also asserted that the military operations of the coalition adhere to international laws, including the international humanitarian law. Regarding the annual report of the Secretary General of the United Nations in Children in Armed Conflict, which was issued on the 6th of October 2017, the participants rejected the parts which feature false and inaccurate information, calling the United Nations to review the mechanisms of monitoring. They also commended the parts which were not based on distorted facts and reflected the measures taken by the coalition to protect civilians. The meeting also condemned the negative role of Iran in supporting militias and providing arms, ammunitions and ballistic missiles in a flagrant violation of the Security Council's Resolution 2216. It also held the Iranian regime accountable for targeting the security of the region. The participants affirmed their country's commitment to, to aid the Yemeni people and express appreciation to the sacrifices and relief provided directly and indirectly by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Egypt, Kuwait, Bahrain, Jordan, Djibouti, Yemen, Malaysia, Pakistan, Senegal, and Morocco. They also expressed support to the efforts of the UN envoy Ismail Welda Sheikh Ahmed based on the Security Council's Resolution 2216, the Gulf Initiative, and the outcomes of the National Dialogue. They stressed the importance of exposing the schemes and criminal activities carried out by militias supported by Iran and Hezbollah. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to create urgent solutions to reduce traffic congestion and to increase the follow of traffic on the made roads network in Bahrain, the Works Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning Minister, Engineer Islam bin Abdullah Khalaf, affirmed that the Works Affairs have completed the development of the intersection between Al Ghos and the Airport Avenue in Muharraq. The Minister Khalaf stated that the second phase of the project included adding two separate lanes to turn left from Sheikh Isa Causeway towards B. Saitin and another two lanes towards the Airport Avenue as well as a separate lane to turn right towards Al Ghos Avenue. The second phase also included the expansion of the airport avenue towards Manama, while providing a lane for vehicles heading right towards Bisaitin and a lane for vehicles heading left towards Al Ghos Avenue. The project's second phase, which was the expansion of the airport avenue, started last July, where a right turn towards Bisaitin was introduced. 
The project is part of a comprehensive plan for major strategic road network projects launched by the ministry at a cost of 1.2 billion US dollars funded by the Gulf Development Program. The Minister of Housing Engineer Balsam bin Yagoub al Hamar reported that 37% of the construction works in the Ramli housing project has been completed after signing four construction companies to build 1,265 out of a total of 4,501 housing units. The minister said that the project is a part of a more comprehensive plan to build 10,400 housing units in line with the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister. Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He added that the ministry will tender another 3,240 units, adding that the project, which is built on a 100 hectare area, will provide various services and facilities, including schools, mosques, and public parks. Engineer Al Hamad affirmed the ministry's keenness to finish the project according to the set time frame, commending the efforts of all officials and organizers to implement the project. The minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for funding housing projects in the kingdom, including a Ramli project. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Avenues Mall was opened with a vast seafront area for its visitors to enjoy. Present were ministers and officials from different governmental and private entities that have all been a part of making Avenue Small a successful project. Here is Sara Break with more information in this report. Avenues is the Kingdom of Bahrain's first seafront shopping and entertainment center, spread over a 273,000 square meter area and along 1.5 kilometers of seafront. This project uh, had been uh, a good example. It had been implemented in a record time, in, in two years' time. It had been mm, finalized uh, from the legal point of view and also at the implementation stage. It had been built uh, uh, at an uh, on an area uh, uh, 48,000 square meter, whereas the rest of the, uh, of the land, which is 273,000 uh, square meter, is uh, uh, is still uh, open to the public and it, uh, as you uh, as anybody can see it now it's uh, a landscaped area with uh, with pedestrian track and uh, also uh, uh, it, it got a number of uh, uh, a number of facilities is to serve all levels uh, in this in this society we want to congratulate the kingdom of bahrain on the opening of this uh, avenues uh, mall also i like to thank uh, his highness uh, the crown prince uh, prince salman bin hamad al khalifa for his patronage of this event and for him coming uh, personally to open it he is uh, the pioneer in encouraging these type of investments in Bahrain. From the electricity point of view, we have provided uh, the needed electricity and power supply for this huge mall, and we will make sure that this is uh, going to be provided on a continuous basis, not only for this mall, but for the second phase of this mall as well. Also, we have arranged with the owners that they use solar energy wherever possible. So in the first phase, they will use solar energy on their car parks, and in the second phase, they will build it into their designs. And we think that will be good for Bahrain and good for the owners. Centered around a family-friendly environment and in close proximity to iconic landmarks, avenues will complete the experience of any tourist, resident or business visitor that strives to experience the modern, friendly Bahrain atmosphere. Opening uh, such a popular mall and a shopping center will definitely enhance the uh, tourism infrastructure. Uh, uh, today when we look at the tourism expenditure uh, per capita, you realize that it's divided into uh, several parts. Shopping and hotels are the main tourism expenditures for uh, GCC and tourists. So definitely such a retail center will uh, add, uh, add value in terms of tourism expenditure. Uh, um, 
moreover, the timing is, is vital. Uh, uh, the season is coming up. We have uh, the cruise ships coming on in November, um, uh, the GCC holidays in January, February, and March. I think uh, the timing is also essential. Many amenities are yet to come, such as the water taxi service that will transport passengers to and from the development. In shopping mall now, it's, it's, it's not about retail. It's about uh, introducing entertainment and introducing uh, 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 food and beverages. So, so uh, uh, percentage-wise, internationally, especially in this area, uh, uh, the, the food and beverages this, in, this, in, this, in this mall it's approximately 50%. So we are introducing a cluster of restaurants on the bay. So that is that is really uh, what creates uh, difference. The Avenues is a venture by Bahraini investors in partnership with retailers such as M. Shaya and also Mabani Corporation from Kuwait. And the Avenues Bahrain sets the standards for malls all over the Middle East with new international food places as well as merchandise all ready to be consumed by the public on the 29th of October. This is Salma Break reporting for Bahrain International. The Ministers of Information Affairs of the Terrorism Combating Countries met today in Manama, welcoming the U.S. strategy towards Iran and affirming the importance of countering terrorism and all who support it. The minister stressed the need to address the role of Qatar in interfering in the internal affairs of Arab countries through supporting the concept of political Islam that adopts terrorism as a means of achieving goals. The ministers asserted the importance of addressing the hatred rhetoric sponsored by the Qatari government and its media, emphasizing the need to enhance the values of tolerance, cultural variety, and promoting positive interaction between communities. The meeting discussed a number of suggestions on enhancing joint media work to serve the international efforts of combating sectarianism and terrorism in the world. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which he delivered in the 2017 Government Forum and in line with the national plan to revive the pearling industry in Bahrain, Bahrain Mumtalikat Holding Company announced the establishment and launch of Bahrain Institute for Pearls and Precious Gemstones, Donat, as a closed Bahraini company. The chief executive officer of Bahrain Mumtalikat, Mohammed Al Kohaji, said that a board of directors will soon be appointed for Dana to develop and enhance the Institute's work and services that it provides. A very good evening. You're watching the Business News in Bahrain International with me, Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. Bahrain Oil Share Index has closed at 1,276.77 points, marking a decrease of 0.61 points below the previous closing. The decrease was in the investment and the commercial bank sectors, and investors mainly traded in the industrial sector, representing 44.8% of total shares. 79 equity transactions took place, including 1,335,191 shares, worth 353,813 Bahraini dinars. Under the patronage of the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani, Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority launched the second edition of the Sea Festival in the presence of its CEO, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamoud Al Khalifa, and other senior tourism officials at Bahrain Bay. Hosting this event comes as part of Bahrain's long-term strategy to further develop its tourism sector under the slogan of Ours Yours, which contributes to the kingdom's economy and towards the 2030 economic vision. The festival aims to showcase the kingdom's rich link to the sea, trying to several Bahraini sea-related traditions and cultural activities by using the latest technologies. The festival features a number of activities, including the Techno Aqua World Area for games and leader activities, such as the 360 Virtual Reality Gaming Zone. The Sea Festival will run until November 4th from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday to Thursday and from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Friday. The tickets have been priced at 2 Bahraini dinars per person. 
The Bahrain Society of Engineers closed the BIPEX 2017 exhibition with the participation of 65 exhibitors on 120 projects from inside and outside the kingdom. The value of real estate assets offered at BIPEX this year exceeded $20 billion. This year, BIPEX has witnessed one of its strongest and most successful courses in, ter in terms of attracting local and regional exhibitors and reviewing major projects recently launched by leading regional and international players in real estate development. BIPEX has provided investors with a deeper understanding of the potential of Bahrain's real estate market, highlighting the kingdom's strategic and commercial status. Chief Executive Officer of Bahrain Airport Services Company, Salman Al Mahmid, announced that the company has launched a national functional substitution plan. Based on its strategy of investing in human resources and enhancing the capabilities of national calibers, Al Mahmid said that they have established a training program to develop business management skills targeting young employees. They aspire in the future to reach higher managerial positions. Where the program was designed by the Department of Education and Training in the company in accordance with international standards and developments in the business world.